Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Paul Yester here, and today I'm going to show you another one of these player satisfaction surveys for Dead by Daylight. It seems like every time they put out um, some new content, they touch base with us to see what we think about it, and ask us some questions about other subjects that are going on behind the scenes that they want our input on. So we're going to go through this. I'm not sure exactly how much of this I'm going to answer because I don't want to influence you, but I know I need to answer some of it to make sure that you see all of the questions. And I know there's some of you out there who think that this doesn't mean anything and it doesn't matter what you fill out on this. But if you watch one of the recent streams, they had this lady on there who talks about how they compile all that information and how they absolutely do look at everybody's surveys and um, they make decisions based on this. So I suggest that you participate in this. Um, it isn't meaningless by any means. So. We're going to go through this. It's anonymous, takes 15 minutes to complete, and your responses help us continue to improve the game. Here we go. Overall, how satisfied are you with Dead by Daylight? Very satisfied to very dissatisfied. We have a range here. Question two, to what extent do you agree with the following? Dead by Daylight is fun. Dead by Daylight is worth the time I spend on it, and I feel that the game is fair. Question three, roles, experience, and platforms. Which role do you play most and prefer to play? Killer, Survivor, or both equally? Question four. Which platforms do you play Dead by Daylight on? PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, or mobile? Question five. If Dead by Daylight initiated cross-progression, which additional platform are you most likely to play on? Cross-progression, your game progress transfers between platforms. Well, that for me, that would be the Switch, because I own that one. Okay, we'll fill it. He's here. Switch. Oh, well, boop, boop, boop. When did you start playing Dead by Daylight? Long time ago. Question six. Silent Hill. Have you played the latest Dead by Daylight chapter, Silent Hill? Um, yes, I played both roles. Which best describes when you first heard about the Silent Hill chapter? I think... That, I think it was May. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was May. How did you hear about this chapter? From myself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Question 10. Overall, how satisfied are you with the latest chapter? Question 11. Did you play Dead by Daylight prior to acquiring this chapter? Yes, actively, yes, but in the past or no. So they just want to know if you're like a new to Dead by Daylight or if uh, you were playing it all along or if you had played it, but you put it down until this chapter came out. Question 12. How passionate are you about the Silent Hill franchise? Not at all, too extremely. Question 13. How much did it frustrate you to have to wait between hearing about the chapter and it being released? So they had the teaser and then the public test build, and then if you were on console or if you didn't participate in the public test build, you had to wait three weeks for it to come out after um, the public test build on the fourth anniversary stream, right? Question 14, how would you rate the quality of the following features? The Midwich Elementary School appearance and the Midwich Elementary School gameplay. Very low quality to very high quality. Next. Okay, so this is Silent Hill Survivor Cheryl. Her perk description, Soul Guard, Blood Pact, or Repress, Repressed Alliance. How fun is it to play with these following survivor perks? Not at all, to moderately for Soul Guard, Blood Pact, and Repressed Alliance. I'll let you read through those when you take the survey yourself in case you need a refresher on what these perks actually do. Um, normally I would read through all that, but this, this is, is a lengthy survey from what I'm told, so I'm just gonna power through. What potential does each new survivor perk have to work well with the other game perks Synergistically, Soul Guard Blood Pact Repressed Alliance. No chance for synergy, considerable chances for synergy. Question 17. How would you rate the quality of the following features? Cheryl Mason, character appearance. Very high quality to very low quality. Again, all of these have ranges. And Cheryl Mason's lore. Question 18. How engaging do you find the general feeling and theme of Cheryl? Extremely engaging, not engaging at all, or somewhere in between. Next. Silent Hill Killer and Executioner perk descriptions for Force Penance Trail of Torment 
and Deathbound. How fun is it to play with the following killer perks? Four spins, Trail of Torment, Deathbound. Not at all, moderately. Oh, sorry, very somewhere in between. Question 20. What potential does each new killer perk have to work well with the other character perks synergistically? Considerable chances of synergy or no chance for synergy? Question 21. How would you rate the quality of the following features? Executioner's character appearance and the power and the lore. From very high quality to very low quality, somewhere in the middle. Question 22. How engaging do you find the general feeling and theme of the Executioner? Question 23. To what extent do you agree with the following? I am satisfied with repeatedly pushing the spacebar during the hook struggle phase as survivor. Hmm. I would prefer a different mechanic for the hook struggle phase than repeatedly pushing the spacebar. Interesting. When trapped in the Executioner's Cage, survivors must complete skill checks to avoid being taken by the entity. To what extent do you agree with falling? I am satisfied with the skill check mechanic during the cage phase. I would prefer that the skill check mechanic replaced the space bar mechanic during the hook struggle phase. So this is asking you if you want to switch out on hook struggle and have to perform skill checks rather than repeatedly pushing the space bar. Hmm. Now I presume that if you missed one of those skill checks, it wouldn't be an instant death. Maybe it would just accelerate your blood bar, like how it does in the cage. If you missed one of those skill checks and it was lights out, I don't know how many people would want to agree to that, but anyway, we will see. Matchmaking. Question 25. How would you rate the experience with the matchmaking in the past three months? Matchmaking time has been very negative to very positive. The teammates that you've been matched with, for example, the rank and match skill level, same, same question. And the opponents that you're matched against for rank and match skill level, has that experience been positive, negative, or in between? To what degree would you be interested in using the following? An indicator of the wait time for a match when you enter the killer or survivor queue. Or a blood point boost incentive to switch from my desired role to another with a, wait, a shorter wait time. I guess you could have both. So on mobile what they do is they have like red light, green light and they show you which queue is the most full. Like if killer is red then you know that you're going to get a game much faster uh, when survivor is green. So... That's an interesting thing they do on mobile to show you, like, a visual indicator of uh, presumed wait times. So this is saying if they could encourage you to switch roles to a role that has a shorter wait time, they could give you a blood point boost as an incentive to do so. Which would you be most interested in? Question 27. An indicator of the wait time for a match when you enter this killer or survivor queue... A blood point boost incentive to switch from my desired role to another role with a shorter wait time or neither. Imagine there's a very high wait time to play a match as your desired role and there's a very short wait time for the opposite role. If a blood point boost were offered for you to move from your desired role to the opposite role, what is the minimum blood point bonus that may entice you to switch? Um, 1%? No. Isn't everybody just going to put this to 100 and say, yeah, you give me 100% and I'll switch it. All right, so I guess this is by fives, or can I actually... 1%. Yeah, you can actually do it. I think everybody's probably going to say 100. We're just going to leave that in the middle. Eh. Next. Question 29. Dead by Daylight hopes to undergo graphic improvements. Which of the following are expectations you have about improved graphics. Updated animation will make the game smoother. Updated graphics will make the game more immersive. Updated lighting will make the game scarier. Updated graphics will benefit my gameplay. None, I have no expectations or other, please specify. Question 30. Dead by Daylight hopes to undergo graphic improvements. Which of the following are your concerns that you have about improved graphics? The general gameplay will be affected Performance on the platform I use may change. Performance on other platforms may change and affect the crossplay experience. Pretty uh, 
telling that they're going full bore with this crossplay around the same time as the graphics, perhaps. My PC will not be able to run the game following a graphic update. Changes in lighting or, or quality will change how easy it is to hide. None, I have no concerns, and other, please specify. Question 31. From what medium other than TV and movies would you like to see new licensed chapters introduced? Video games, real life, manga, anime, comics, or books? Video games. Spring trap petition when? Uh, <laughs> I can't even allow people to talk about FNAF in my chat anymore because it's so divisive. It's crazy. It's, it's just like a console war in there. When that people talk about whether or not they want FNAF in Five Nights at Freddy's in Dead by Daylight. I know there's a lot of people who really are pushing for Springtrap right now, but, uh, you know, wanting a thing doesn't mean you get a thing. But, you know, petitions are great, though, to let people know what you think. Real life. So this would be like Jack the Ripper. That's a, one that I have heard requested quite a bit. I'm not really familiar with any anime requests. Comics, I know a lot of people want to see the Joker come in as a killer. I don't know if that would ever happen. And books. Question 32. What is one license that you would most like to see? So this doesn't say uh, from other than TV or movies. So you can put in whatever you want here. It isn't limited to non-television or movies. If you have a TV or movie property, put it in there. Or, you know, if you have something you want to see from one of these categories, by all means, enter that in the box as well. Question 33. To what extent do you agree with the following? Playing on the same map several times during a session gets boring. Playing different maps in the same realm several times during a play session gets boring. Like if you're playing a bunch of McMillans, I guess, is what they mean. Or a bunch of uh, farm maps in one session. I prefer it when a new map is in an entirely new realm than the rest. I dislike it when a new map is already is in an already established realm. So that would mean like the Plague's Temple of Purgation is a Red Forest map type, or the Clown's map, Father Campbell's Chapel, is um, you know an asylum um, nurses type map, piggybacking. So they want to know if you want it to be an entirely new place, or Sanctum of Wrath is also a Yamoka state variation, right? They want to know if you want an entirely new realm. Or if it bothers you if they piggyback off of an existing realm. Uh, question 34. How many killers do you own? And then the drop down there to 10 plus. How many different killers do you play with on a regular basis? To what extent do you agree with the following? When a new chapter is released, I find it exciting to learn to play a new killer. When a new chapter is released, I find it tiresome to learn to play a new killer. And I feel there are too many killers to learn in Dead by Daylight. Strongly disagree, strongly agree, somewhere in the middle. Question 37. To what extent do you agree with the following? The main reason I get new chapters is for the perks. The main reason I get new chapters is for the killer. The main reason I get new chapters is to support the game. The main reason I get a new chapter is for the theme and fantasy of it. I enjoy how often the new map is summoned after a new chapter release. Well, not me. Like, I thought we were going to have Midwich Elementary coming out like crazy when the new uh, chapter started, but it didn't appear enough for my liking. I don't know how you all felt about that when it started out. When it started, when, when you get a new chapter, I want to learn the new map. I want to go to the new map a lot. After a new release, I find it hard to switch my main character due to my rank. After a new release, I find it hard to switch my main character due to not having the perks I want. Uh, collection trailer. Silent Hill collection trailer. Have you seen this video? Yes, no, or don't remember? Have you purchased any Silent Hill cosmetic items? Oh, hang on a second. Have you seen this video? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. See, some of these I have to answer. I miss questions. To what extent do you agree with the following? I enjoyed watching this video. This video was informative. I learned about new Silent Hill cosmetics from this video. This video is visually appealing. This video was too short. 
Have you purchased any Silent Hill cosmetic items? Yes. How did you first learn about Silent Hill cosmetic items? Content creators. Uh, reporting feature. Have you ever used the player reporting feature at the end of a match? Yes. To what extent do you agree with the following? I am satisfied with the functionality of the reporting feature. I am satisfied with the outcome of using the reporting feature. I feel that it makes an impact when I report misbehavior. Being able to report misbehavior brings value to the game. As it is, I would continue to use the reporting feature. It's funny that this is on here because I actually had a conversation with people today that they don't feel like the reporting feature does anything. They don't feel like people are being banned. I know that that is a feeling that's out there. I've had many people express that to me over uh, the years. So I, um, I understand there is a privacy policy and they can't tell you that they've banned somebody or, you know, meted out punishment necessarily for these things. But um, I, I think the overall opinion is that it doesn't do anything which I'm not saying that's the case. I just think that that is the general impression. So I think there are many people who don't even bother to use it because they don't think it does anything. Question 44, the archives. Have you ever made progress in the archives? Yes, one, two, three. Have you ever purchased a Rift Pass? Yes, one, two, three. 46, have you ever read, listened to, or watched official Dead by Daylight lore on external websites? instead of unlocking it in the archives. No. I like to do it myself. Do you know how to do the following? Unlock the story, lore, yes. Read, watch the story you've unlocked, yes. Access story from past tomes, yes. What story, lore, in the archives did you make progress towards in tome one? I should also note that I haven't put any lore on my channel because I want people to unlock it. I am going to start to put lore like once uh, rifts are closed, but I never give any sneaks to any of the lore animations or anything on my channel. Question 48. What story lore in the archives did you make progress toward in the tomes? Yeah, all of these. Um, Tome 2, same question. Jane Romero, David King, Herman Carter, Rin Yamoka, Observation and Revelations. I did all of it. Tome 3. This one's a little trickier. I haven't gone back and watched all of this yet because I haven't completed it. So, um, I don't think I've... I haven't... I made progress, but I haven't actually watched The Legion Story yet. And these, I don't know if they're done. Um, because I'm on... The last page so i haven't seen it so i'm gonna just leave those blank observation and revelations to what extent do you agree with the following i enjoy reading and watching dead by daylight story lore in general i enjoy the overall fantasy of dead by daylight part of the reason i use the archives is to unlock the story and lore i enjoy when cosmetics are related to the characters story and lore yeah I prefer when cosmetics are related to the character, story, and lore. I enjoy when cosmetics are related. I prefer when cosmetics are related. Okay. Kind of the same, but... To what extent do you agree with the following? I enjoy the narrated voiceovers that come with the written story lore. Yeah, I think that has to remain. You can always turn it off if you don't want to hear the voice. The voiceovers are narrated at a good speed. I'm satisfied with the level of emotion and feeling in the narrated voiceovers. I enjoy watching the story lore animations. The animations bring value to Dead by Daylight stories. Are we trying to, like, is the is the narrator's job on the line here? What is going on? <laughs> I love these animations. Question 53, which features of story lore do you prefer? Prefer type of story? Expanding character backgrounds, introducing new characters, expanding the DBD universe, observer explorations, or seasonal event-based lore. Wow, that's a tricky one. Hmm. That's a tough one. So does introducing new characters mean, like, somebody we're actually going to see, or it's like a hint to something that may never come? I don't know. I think just knowing more about the characters that I know would be my preferred one, but the, uh, there's a lot of good answers there. 
Preferred genre of story lore. Cheerful, happy, sad and dark, or angry and vengeful. Well, I mean, we all like a happy story, but I don't know. It just seems kind of weird for Dead by Daylight. And then Kate Denson signed a multi-album deal and the entity whisked her away the next day. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Preferred role for the story. Killers, survivors, or no preference. All right. Well, I think there's only about 60 questions, so we're getting near the end here, gang. To what extent do you agree with the following for communications? I enjoy engaging with the DVD community. The developer communications encourage me to engage with the DVD community. The tone of the developer's communications is fun when appropriate. The tone of the developer's communications is positive when appropriate. What does that mean when appropriate? Does that mean when you're a dick to the devs, they don't be surprised if they're a dick back to you? <laughs> what does that mean when appropriate? <laughs> Uh, all right. 55. Did you watch the Dead by Daylight's fourth anniversary stream? No, I was unaware of it. No, but I was aware of it. Yes, part of it. Yes, I watched the entire stream. Question 56. Have you participated in any of the community anniversary events? For example, contest raffles, the DVD exam, developer streams, fog whisperer streams, goodies, etc. No, I was unaware of the events. No, but I was aware of the events or yes. Question 57. In what order of importance do you consider the following motivations for when deciding to purchase a new game? This is the decision making. So then they want you to rank these from one to six. Oh, well, then it just did them all like that. Okay. The gameplay, wanting to play with my friends, graphic quality, game genre, graphic style, the overall theme and fantasy of the game. So what happens if I change one of these? Oop. And then this one goes blank. Okay. They want you to rank these first through sixth place, which is the most important to you. Question 58. In conclusion, in the last three months, have you recommended Dead by Daylight to a friend, mem family member, or colleague? Have I? <laughs> what is your gender? Male, female, non-binary, prefer not to answer. In what country do you currently reside? Oh, Canada. In what year were you born? <laughs> How far back does this go? Before 1945. Question 62. How would you describe your experience level with Dead by Daylight? Well, I guess I have to say a veteran, even though I still suck. Uh, question 63, which of the following genres of music do you enjoy? Electronic, K-pop, rock, indie, jazz, classical, pop country, hip-hop, musical theater, or other. This is so they can decide what killer chase music they're going to give us for the future characters. We're going to be running away from uh, the K-popper. Okay, hey, can we get the dueling banjos for the the Leatherface and Hillbilly rework, please? No, 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 no. No. All right. Do you have anything else to share? Let us know, if possible. Please answer in English. Huh. What should we say, gang? Keep on, keeping on, and then submit. That's it. Thank you for taking the survey. We are done. So that's it. We are done. I will have the link to the survey in the description and the pin top comment in the video for you to take it yourself. I strongly encourage you to fill it out with your own answers and uh, let the devs know what you think about what's going on with the game. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.